Hello, Americans. I'm Paul Harvey. If I were the devil. If I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population. But I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. The... So I set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do, Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me. Our Father which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I have mesmerizing media fanning the flame. The President of the United States is racist. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellect, but neglect the discipline of emotions, just like those run wild. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. If I were the devil, I would do everything in my power to keep you from the word of God. I would say anything I could think of, anything I thought you would believe, anything that works to get you to read other things. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2.11, we are not ignorant of his devices. We know how he works. And today we're going to talk about some of the lies that we've noticed pouring out of his factory. All the lies that are geared towards destroying the confidence in God's word. One, you already know it, so don't read it. He's lying to you. You don't know it. I've studied the Bible for quite some time, and in no way could I say I know it. I know a great deal about it, but there's so much more. For the typical church member to shun the Bible because I've been there and done that is laughable. Two, no one can understand it, so don't read it. He's lying. Even a child can understand a great deal of scripture. And meanwhile, the PhD will find plenty to challenge his thinking. Only a book from the Almighty could touch so many at every level of their existence. Three, it's boring, so don't read it. He's lying. The Bible is a lot of things, but boring is not one of them. Uh, we're boring, and that's the problem. Four, it's better left to the professional, so don't read it. He's lying, using a lie he once sold to the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages by keeping the Holy Scriptures in the Latin and not in the language of the people. See, the Church could give it whatever slant they chose. Some very hardy individuals. They paid for the right for us to own Scripture in our own tongue with their very lives. We must not take lightly the privilege we have to own a copy of the very Word of God in our own language. Five, you need Greek and Hebrews to know what it really means, so don't bother reading it. Satan's lying. The English conveys very well the meanings of Scripture in their original languages. However, reading the Bible in its original form is still thrilling. We encourage people to study Hebrew and Greek if possible. Number six. The English Bible was not translated correctly. I hear this so often. 
If you doubt that, listen to preachers say the translation got this wrong. What it really says is, so don't read it. Again, the devil is lying. And half the time those preachers are misrepresenting the truth as well. Just read it. Number seven, it's contradictory, so don't read it. He's got half truth here, but he's still lying. There are no contradictions in scripture regarding any doctrine or teaching of consequence. There are places where one of the writers says 100 people were killed and another writer says it was a thousand, that sort of thing. Scholars often have explanations for this. To me personally, I love those little shades of differences. They're the very answer to the charge that the church tampered with the Bible to make it say what they want. If so, they would have cleaned up those loose ends. And number eight, experts disagree on what it means, so don't read it. Again, he's lying. The Christian church, no matter what denomination, agrees with 90% of the scripture message, or even more. Number nine, the Bible is outdated. Not for our modern times, so don't read it. He's lying. It's as contemporary as this morning's paper, or even more so. What does today's date have to do with anything anyway? Number 10. The Bible is just a bunch of rules, so don't read it. Another Satan lie. Scripture is anything but that. It contains the greatest stories, most inspiring teachings, and blessed insights imaginable. Number 11. You are so far beyond that. The Bible has nothing for you, so don't read it. Again, he is lying, and my best response to this is, open it. Number 12. Men wrote it, so forget about it being divine. Don't waste any of your time reading it. Another half-truth that is a whole lie. A true, holy men of old wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, said the apostle in 2 Peter 1.21. God used men and women to write scripture. It did not drop to the earth fully written. Number 13. Reading the Bible will turn you into a religious fanatic. And you don't want people thinking you're a nut, so don't risk that by reading the Bible. You guessed it, another lie. To say that a fanatic is someone who loves Jesus more than you do. Uh, what reading the Bible will do is instruct you to the Savior, teach you about salvation, and nourish your soul. Anything that can do that is your friend, and instead of making you feel weird, it'll make you whole. See 2 Timothy 3, 15-17. Once again, Satan is lying. 14. No one with intelligence reads the Bible anymore, only religious fundamentals and extremists, so don't read it. He's lying. Some of the smartest people on the planet, including scientists and professors and philosophers, uh, and my neighbor up the road, they read and love the Holy Bible, and they are among the sanest people on the planet. Number 15. You're too busy. You can read it some other time when you are feeling spiritual, when you have plenty of time, when you're older. Just don't read it now. He's lying. You're not too busy, maybe too lazy or too worldly, too unbelieving, or too lost. To wait until you are feeling spiritual, whatever that means, is a fool's errand, and you should not fall for that. And to wait until you are older is another ploy he uses on the simple-minded. Many a person has gone out into eternity, lost, who had planned to take care of these matters down the road when they were elderly. The only problem is they didn't live to become elderly. Don't let that happen to you. So my friends, do you see a trend here? The enemy will say absolutely anything to keep you from reading the Bible. Are you playing into his hands? Are you believing these lies? You do so to your own detriment, my friend. So get your Bible and get started. And I'm going to tell you how. 1. Open to the Gospel of Matthew. That's page 1 of the New Testament. You can read all 28 chapters of this short volume in an hour or so. 2. Keep reading. You will read three other Gospels similar to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but different, on the life and ministry of Jesus. Each writer has something unique to offer. 3. Keep reading. Acts of the Apostles tells us what happened after Jesus left. 4. And yes, again, keep reading. You are now to the Epistles, a fancy word for letters. Uh, most of them are from the Apostle Paul to churches in various locales. You won't understand everything, but you can grasp a great deal. 5. Don't worry about what you cannot understand. A treasure all that you do understand because there's a great deal of it. 6. Read consecutively, uh, not just jumping around in large sections, uh, at least one hour at a time. And 7. When you finish, go back and start again. I promise you will get more the second time through than you did the first. 8. Pray. Each time you open the Bible, say this, Father, help me to understand this and get what you want me to see. Thank you for hearing my prayer.
And nine, it's okay to get help. After you have read it through a few times, ask a pastor if there's a Bible study class you can attend. Uh, to hear a good teacher teach about what you have been reading can be a privilege. And 10, obey it. In John 13, 17, Jesus said, If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Also see James 1, The blessing comes from the obeying of his teachings, not from reading or learning them. Eventually, you will be able to say what Job did. I have esteemed the words of thy mouth more than my necessary food. Job 23, 12. Anyone who gets you reading the Bible has done you an incredible, wonderful favor. And I'd love to be that person. And again, thank you for listening. God bless you all. If you wish to give, there is a link below in the description. And until next time, God bless you and your families. Please be safe.